Okay, call me surprised. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Now, when I went in to see Black Adam yesterday, I was expecting to see a typical rock movie. A typical, very generic, rock-centered action movie that has some fun, maybe some quippy moments here and there, but overall just a very general rock experience. Did I get that? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Actually, surprisingly, yes. Is this a good movie? Eh, that's kind of debatable. Now, the whole state of the DCEU is just complete calamity at this point, and the amount of time that The Rock has spent making a very clear villain a hero or a anti-hero character for this film is remarkable. Apparently it's been like 10, 15 years of him working to make this character and bring it to screen. And I have a feeling that The Rock just kept on waiting and waiting to really make this movie his own just to see how far the DCEU could bury itself. And he waited till the perfect moment, right when this merger happened. I actually thought this movie was a lot better than it had any right to be. Because not only is this film about Black Adam, about The Rock's character, and he actually has a little bit of stoicism, in, but the movie surprisingly enough, is not just about him. Now, you know in those disaster movies where you get a bunch of these side characters and side families and whatnot that you really don't give a shit about? This film has a similar sort of idea. There is the Justice Society, there's the mom and the kid who are around the kind of general's focus of the area that they are in that is under regime control. The mom being the scientist, archaeologist, who is trying to free the people from oppression. The son being obsessed with DC superheroes, which, again, they're just going straight up with the meta there. Full-on association, marketing everything about <laughs> these superheroes in real life. And there's also sort of a villain character going on in the background, which is definitely a weak link. Those side characters, especially the Justice uh, Society, each character has a little bit more than just a very blank one slate uh, persona. Pierce Brosnan and his Dr. Fate was really cool to see. It's been a while since I've seen Pierce on the big screen and it was great to see him here. The guy who played Hawkman, all the way from Supernatural stabbing Sam Winchester in the back days to here. Good on you, sir. Good on you for making it this far and like building your career this high. Then you've got Adam Smasher and Cyclone who they are actually kind of enjoyable as well. I was expecting them to be very generic, very kind of one-note characters, and in a sense they are, but they are still enjoyably put into this film, which I've got to say, for so much that's happening in this movie, you've got The Rock resurrecting, coming back, fighting all of these mercenaries, the Justice Society coming in to try and take him down because he's killing people, even though they are bad people, and this whole other sort of villain demon thingy about Bobby going on on the side, the film's pacing is actually quite good. The film articulates itself quite well because it takes the style of Zack Snyder's work, the high contrast, saturation, and some slow-mo, but it doesn't rely off of it. It's a lot of that slow, quite kind of intercut rather than just, you know, a two minute straight long super slow-mo football scene. I've gotta give credit to the director. The dude started with House of Wax, which is shit. And he made his way all the way up to here at doing the Jungle Cruise, which is where he got introduced to The Rock. And he brings a very cool, very a bit a copy and paste of Zack Snyder's visual style, but he's able to put it into a way that doesn't bore you or doesn't make you feel like it's absolutely like, high snarky on itself. The guy knows what he's making. He's making a robust, very straightforward superhero movie who just so happens to kill people. Does add a little bit of kind of morality clause in here because when the Justice Society come in and start trying to take on Black Adam, like, hey, we're here to save you. They're like, hey, fuck off. You haven't done anything here for the last 20 years of our oppression. And the first time that this guy comes around and starts killing bad people, you're like, oh, that's where we draw the line. So I like that aspect to the film. I thought that was actually probably one of the most enjoyable aspects because they keep that around. And some of the violence in this movie, I do not know how it got past a PG-13 rating, especially certain parts at the end. But 
I really did enjoy it. Something that did make me feel a little bit surprised is I cared for these characters. Not all of them. Some of them are just like, ah. There's some, some sacrifices, some twists, some surprises that I wasn't expecting, and I thought it was okay. It's not anything groundbreaking, by God, no, but after having a bunch of Marvel movies that try to have a little bit possibly too much political side to them, or in some cases more so of shock value, or ooh value than actual story value, or just general no story whatsoever, this was a surprise. So in the end, I'm going to give Black Adam a 4 out of 7. I'm really surprised I'm giving it that number, but I thought it was enjoyable. I, I thought it wasn't garbage. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts. What did you guys think of this? I'm kind of surprised. The critics aren't liking this, but that seems to be the kind of the major thing. And honestly, with the track record that DC has had, you've got Wonder Woman, The Suicide Squad, and Shazam. Really, those are your only positive movies? All I can say is, stay around for the end credits. Yeah, you definitely want to stay around for those. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.